uh, the word normalize is a hard word for me to, I because I, I find it so difficult to think that you were sitting mm -hmm. in a chamber deciding where I could go to the restroom, whether yeah. or not I could go eat at a restaurant and somebody could just say, mm -hmm. sorry, we don't like you, you can't be here. And mm -hmm. it's, it, it blows my mind that yeah. it came to the point that I had to be talked about in that basic of a sense of human dignity of can I eat, can I go to a restroom? And thank goodness the state of Massachusetts understood that I need to go to the restroom and I need to eat and I need to feel safe doing both of those things. And for people mm -hmm. to think that I'm going to do something nefarious mm -hmm. because of this new transgender accommodation law, right. I think is misinformation or uninformed people. I don't really know that there's a whole lot of people that truly think that I'm going to do something nefarious once they meet me, right, but right. they've got this concept that they've not been taught about. So the role mm -hmm. models, I consider you a role model. Well, no, thank you. And, and I will say, you know, speaking of role models, because you know, I talked about the fact that, um, you know, when I first became a legislator is when the SJC, the Supreme Judicial Court, ruled that same-sex marriage was legal. Um, but I, I really think back to, you know, sort of why I already had those values uh, once, once elected to sort of uh, support equal rights for everyone. And, and it really does come back to, to my parents. And I, I talked about this uh, when the 2011 law was passed to prevent government discrimination against transgender persons is that I distinctly remember uh, when I was fairly young, probably 10 or 11 years old, my, my dad coming home from work one day and saying that one of his coworkers had transitioned um, and had you know, changed their name and it, had uh, you know, transitioned uh, to, a, I think it was a transgender woman. And you know, as a 10 year old kid, sort of taking that in, but I think the biggest influence for me at that moment, sitting at the, din the dining room table, was that my dad, you know, treated it as no big deal. You know, it was something that, you know, he observed. He saw that his coworker had transitioned, and you know, there was nothing that had changed his, you know, friendship with that person. And I think that really sent a message to me as I grew up that you know that's how you should treat everyone equally, regardless of where they stand, if you will, in life. Wow. So that was a big, that was a big impact. So lucky, lucky draw yeah. <laughs> to get the parents you got. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, now, I know that right now there is, I think it's, I can't remember the name of the organization off the top of my head, but they are getting signatures for a referendum. That is and true. And I think the signatures are being counted right now. Mm -hmm. And so let's say that there are enough signatures for a referendum. Mm -hmm. for 2018. As the transgender community, we have already, like you said, we've organized very well. We, you know, we figured out mm -hmm. a ways to do this. What would be another step that we could do to make sure, in your opinion, that in 2018, me being equal to these people isn't taken away from me? Because I understand that civil rights are a tenuous thing amongst the minority. They come and they go. Uh, and I really want to hold on to this civil right of being your equal. So mm -hmm. can you give me some advice of what I could do as a constituent of yours mm -hmm. of how I can promote my thought system on this and how I can promote my belief that I am your equal? Mm -hmm. I would appreciate it. <laughs> a absolutely. And I, and I would I would argue that you're you're doing this show for is this sh you had the show for the past year. Is that past right? Past year. Yep. OK. I mean, that has a big impact that you have a show just like I have a show um, you know, on a monthly basis, that, that sort of makes people more comfortable and gets to know uh, someone who's transgender even if they're not directly friends or have a loved one who's, who's transgender. So I, I think you know, that has an impact. I would say that um, what I would, the best way to, to defeat this ballot measure, measure if it goes to, to the ballot box is, is to have forums you know, in every single town or city uh, where members of the transgender community and perhaps, you know, the business community, elected officials, you know, have a panel to talk about, you know, how the law has protected people and that it's had, you know, no negative effects uh, right. and no okay. harms to, That's a good to idea. Uh, the public at large. So become more involved. Absolutely. Even more involved. <laughs> yes, I know, and that's. And, I but think, no, that's not a bad thing. I mean, that's <laughs> the beauty of this country, in my opinion, Senator. Is, I respect the fact that these people can create a petition 
and put this through a referendum. Mm -hmm. I, I, res I love that about this country. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it hurts me that they are doing it. Right. Exactly. But I love the fact that in this country that we are, have these established rules that say that they can't do that. That, that's very well said, and, and I think the balance that we have in government is the will of the majority versus protecting the rights of minority, and, and I think that's what you know really came up uh, beginning with same-sex marriage, but obviously there's a whole history, you know, going back to slavery, going back to the civil rights movement of, you know, how do you make sure that those that perhaps don't have the votes immediately or don't have the power and and protect their rights, and I think that's. A long struggle, and and uh, it's been amazing to see. I, I think how quickly uh, the LGBT community has received those rights over the past ten or fifteen years. It's been incredibly inspiring and very impressive. I never expected it. I, I never. Didn't either. When I was in East Tennessee, yeah, I never expected to be accepted. It period, and it. Uh, my goal is for East Tennessee and Tennessee to mm -hmm. understand that. I'm here, I'm actually a contributing member to the economy of the state of Massachusetts, the Commonwealth mm -hmm. of Massachusetts. I pay my taxes, I go to my work every day. Mm -hmm. I'm a true contributing factor. I mean, I help the economy of this state, I help the children of this state. Mm -hmm. If you make me less than your equal mm -hmm. and I can't get employment, then where am I going to go for finances? Where mm -hmm. am I going to go for housing? You're pushing me away from being a productive member of society mm -hmm. to the possibility of not being able to be productive whether I want to or not and then having to look for public assistance housing and things mm -hmm. like that which are wonderful things because people need it. Sure, sure. But don't make a law that makes me have to do that is it, my opinion on it. Exactly. 